Hello and welcome back for some more freshly brewed drag tea. Today I have a very special guest who appeared on the season 12 Superfans Makeover Challenge where she was paired with Heidi in Closet. On the show, her endearing and charming personality made us fall in love with her and she overcame her fears by showing off her amazing legs and serving as disco fantasy on the runway. We'll be discussing everything Drag Race, her time on the show, spilling some backstage tea, and I'll of course be asking all of the amazing questions you all sent in. So, please join me in welcoming Nicole Blake, aka Honey Almighty! Hello, hello, hello! Hi, I'm how are you? Today. I'm doing great, just sporting my wonderful Pride shirt because it's Pride out here in LA, so, you know, I gotta show my support. You look great. I love all of the colors, the rainbow and everything. Looks very pride. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, you know, I try. I learn from my drag mom, you know. Show yes. Up to, you know, impress. <laughs> exactly. You've got to be colorful and bold and bright. Yes. You know, and a little soft and supple. Yes. <laughs> soft and <laughs> supple. I can't do that. I can't do the whistle, but. You know, I can't. We try. I, I'm not that talented. It is a talent. Uh, so thank you so much for appearing on my channel today. I know people were very excited to obviously ask you all these questions and we'll get to that obviously at the end with all the subscriber questions. Um, but I was just wondering, obviously we're here to talk about the season 12 makeover challenge that you mm -hmm. were involved with. Um, yes. So I just wanted um, you to sort of tell us a bit about how you got involved, what your background with Drag Race is. Um, I've been following drag and anything that's drag, well, mostly RuPaul, since I was a teenager, I don't know, bump that even way before then. And, you know, it was just something about just drag culture and RuPaul that just honestly just pulled me in. And I've been, a, I honestly have been a super fan since the nineties, you know, since I was, since I was two. <laughs> wow. That's a long, that, that's a long, that's dedication. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I'm, I'm only, I'm only 20. And so, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm in my 30s, but, you know, it's just like, it's been, for me, drag, it's just, it's just one of those things that I just felt super connected to. And I just felt like it's just, it was a part of me. And like, my mom used to always tell me, she's like, you used to be, a, you probably were a drag queen back in the 70s, you know, probably OD'd on the dance floor somewhere, but she's like, and then I gave birth to you, so, in the 80s. <laughs> well, so you were a drag queen in sort of previous life. Yeah, you know, because she's, because I'm honestly, like, one of the only ones in my family that will, like, oh, drag queens, and I've been that, like, since, since the beginning, and my mom was like, yeah, because, like, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the movie, um, oh, gosh, I forgot who's in it, but there's this, like, oh, Studio 54, and so, like, the older lady that was in, like, on the dance floor all the time, my mom was like, that was probably you in a former life, I was like, you know what, probably so. Probably so. Well, that makes sense because obviously on the makeover challenge, you were disco yes. themed. Yes, I was. So maybe so, yeah. that was yeah, kind so it of... it fit perfectly. That fit. It was, a per, it was the past life coming back or something. Yes, yes. I got to live my past life and it was it was beautiful. <laughs> well, we're, you know, I mean, obviously we all loved you on the show and everything. And I, I mean, I'm sure everyone is very jealous that you got to be on there as well because we we're all super fans. So for someone oh, like... Oh my gosh. For someone like you, I it mean... Was, yeah. It was an experience, to say the least. It was it was an amazing experience. I, I can't it's it's just a forever high that I, I can't describe well I can try to do my best, but it's just it was just amazing to be on that show. I'll be on the set in general. And so how did you get involved in terms of like the casting and how you got on the show? Um, well, there was um, a casting alert on Instagram, on the World of Wonder uh, Instagram page, and also on RuPaul's Drag Race uh, Instagram. And so I saw it um, briefly, and you know, I was like, uh, you know, that they're never going to cast me. I'm I'm not TV pretty, so this they're definitely not going to look at me. And so I just kind of put it on the back burner. And then you know, my grandmother always told me, if it's something meant for you, you'll see it in threes. And so I saw it first, and then shortly time after, my husband sent it to me in a message. He's like, you got to do this. I was like, okay. And so, and then my best friend sent me the same message. She's like, if you don't do this, or at least try, 
Not only will I punch you in your face, I will remind you every day that you missed this amazing opportunity. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, that's my sign. I got three messages back to back and I got at least try. So I sent in a video and I did it very quickly on my lunch break. And honestly, on the last day, because I had been procrastinating, because I kept going back and forth, like, no, 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 I, it's not something. They don't look at girls like me, you know, they wouldn't dare. And so I just quickly sent in a video and just was being my colorful self. And I got the call, like, less than 48 hours later, like, hey, we want to interview you, see if it's going to fit. And then I want to say probably, like, less than a week after sending in the video, they're like, okay, can Congratulations, you're going to be on the show. I was like, instant terror set in. Instant. <laughs> but exciting terror. But instant. I can imagine. It must be, it's a weird mix of feelings of like, oh, this is really going to happen. And also excitement yeah. that you get to do it. Well, obviously, I'm so glad that you did decide to apply. And like, it's <laughs> obviously, it's lovely you got on. It's a shame that you like, that you, I, it's a shame uh-huh. that people would feel like, oh, I'm not TV pretty or I'm not there because that shouldn't matter. And I think that was the point, like that all of you that were on there were like a really diverse mix of different people and different like styles. And obviously you are beautiful and you are beautiful and you were such a beautiful soul. And like, you could just tell you were so happy to be there. Although you were like a bit nervous, but also you were like, I am, I am here and I'm doing it. Yeah. It it took a minute, you know, because when we first got there, you know, we have these, we had these little uh, badges that said like, audience participant and I was like I had the only one that said participant I was like oh my god I'm gonna be on camera oh my like I already knew I was gonna be on camera but just the thought process of everyone else is in the audience and I have the only participant badge even though it was a scam (laughs) they did that just to pretty much throw us off the scent but it's just being being there and just you know when I first got there, I was, I realized, you know, I'm the, I'm the only brown girl. And I'm like, oh no. (laughs) So it's like, okay, okay, okay. And I tried my best to just, you know, not stay in my shell as much. Like the first couple of hours I was really quiet. And if anyone who truly knows me knows that it's extremely rare. (laughs) So, but I was super quiet and just like, super, just like, okay, just take it in, you know, just take it in. But there was just, I, I realized that this is a once in a lifetime opportunity I'm going to have to break out of my shell. And I did. <laughs> you did. You did. You could tell you definitely were like warming up as you were on camera. And at the beginning you were very shy. And then as soon as yeah. you were sort of paired off and you were getting into drag, you could tell you were feeling your fantasy and like really loving it. I was. <laughs> I was. I was. You know, it's, it's one of the things I always remind myself that that was... I guess for me, I try to tell myself that's not the only time I can be pretty. And so, you know, I just, I tell myself all the time, like, you can be pretty anytime. And I keep a little reminder next to me, me and Heidi, <laughs> in, my, in my little colorful picture frame here. And just tell myself, you know, this, this was one moment that you broke out of your shell. And now keep living that person. That's a lovely message. And that's such an important message, I think, for everyone watching. And obviously, I'm... I'm so glad that's something that you kind of got from the experience. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned a second ago, obviously, that you, so you had a participant badge, everyone else had audience badges. And so how did that work in terms of, because what we saw was you, we saw everyone sort of, you guys came in and then sat Mm -hmm. down. You, they said that you were told that you were just going to be watching a performance and then they brought you in. Is that how it really happened? Yeah, that's how it really happened. Like, so we, we come in and, you know, we're, as everyone sees, like, you know, we're sitting there, you know, some of us are like drinking water, kind of chilling backstage. And we had these badges on. And so everyone else had a badge that said audience. And mine was the only one that said participant. And so I got a little nervous. And so I was like, wait, am I going to be on stage? I know they said this was a makeover. Wait, am I going to be the only one? Oh no, the girls are going to hate me because I'm going to be the only one that's getting a makeover because everyone else says audience. I was like, oh no, but wait, that's going to be kind of fierce. Well, wait a minute, no. <laughs> that's what my, it was all running through my mind. And then, you know, when we started to head towards, um, I was like, wait a minute, this is not, 
we're not going towards an audience. We're, we're going towards a door. What's ha- what? Wait, what's happening? We all had no idea what was going to be happening. And so what you guys saw on camera was exactly what we experienced. And we were completely, we were completely duped, completely fooled. So that reaction when we walked through the door and all the queens are there, oh my God, I'm so happy for bladder control because it was just, it was going to be a moment because I'm just like, <laughs> if I really, if there, oh, it would have, it would have been a mess. I think all of us probably would have peed on ourselves because it was, it's, you see RuPaul and six queens and just like, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> be there because we're all we all know the show so we're like oh my god it's like all of that set in for all of us and that excitement and tiffany honestly at one point in time when we walked through the door tiffany just collapsed and i was like no get up it's gonna be okay and so it's just like yeah we were all completely just duped we thought we were just gonna be sitting in an audience but no child we was we up there and we about to get fully made over and it was an experience. Well, that's so exciting. I'm, so, I'm, I'm glad that it was actually kind of a secret for you because I think that was what made it yeah. so endearing because it was genuine. Mm-hmm. It was 100% a secret. We had no idea. So like when we got there, we were like, oh, okay, we get it. So we're just going to be sitting here and they might pull us up from time to time, you know. But no, we were completely fooled. So when RuPaul did the introduction about they have no idea, we truly did not know. One hundred percent. No lie, no tea. It's just like we had no idea that this was going to happen. That, I mean, yeah, that's great, and I think that that's what Bethany said as well when I interviewed her. So mm-hmm. she said that she had no idea. Although I guess because you know the show, you maybe at yes. some point I think she said she kind of realized or guessed. Mm-hmm. But it's lovely that it was yeah, sort of a surprise. Did. Yes, it was a big surprise. And so, obviously, then you're standing there with RuPaul, and he's actually, like, looking at you, saying your name, and you've got six queens there. When you then eventually got paired with Heidi, and Mm -hmm. you sort of obviously then get to sit down and talk a bit, what was your first impression of Heidi? My first impression of Heidi was Heidi reminded me of my cousin. And so I was like, oh, child, we're going to work out fine, because... It was just something immediately about Heidi that I could just talk to and, and relate to. She felt like family. And so it was, it was an instant connection, you know, with Heidi, we we were giggling and laughing literally right off the bat, you know? And so when I said, we're going to win, that was my, that was my thought. (laughs) It was just that sense, like, okay, there's something about us that's, you know, that connected and it just, you know, I just felt that we were going to be winners. And even though, you know, we may have been the bottom, but, you know, we still won in our hearts. <laughs> That's a lovely way to think about it. And you did. I think you definitely, you may have not been in the top, spoiler alert, mm-hmm. but I think you definitely, like you said, stole your heart, stole our hearts. And like definitely you two uh-huh. were like the ones I think everyone was really rooting for and really like thinking, like, oh, they just seem like such a lovely pairing. Mm-hmm. It was, it was a good It was a good one. Like, we got in trouble a few times because, you know, Heidi and I, when we got paired and we, you know, kind of got put to our stations, Heidi and I immediately started talking about everything drag race. And so I was like, Heidi, give me the tea. So who got eliminated? She's like, you know, I cannot tell you that. I was like, no, 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 no. Come on. Tell me who, who, who's been here? Because I kept asking her and I was, it's kind of funny because before um, when we got cast on the show, I immediately kind of looked up and like, wait, who's a part of the cast? And <laughs> I was like super excited for Britta Filter. And I was like, oh, if Britta's there. I had been following Britta for years. And so I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And so I kept asking her, I was like, Heidi, was Britta here? Like, I know it was rude. She's like, I can't tell you. She's like, I don't even know who she is. She lied to me. And so... <laughs> So when the cast got announced, um, so I'm so I tell her, I was like, you lied to me. She's like, I couldn't tell you. I wanted to tell you so <laughs> So yeah, that's that connection that Heidi and I had, which just constant giggles and, and laughs and jokes. It was, it was amazing. 
Oh, that's, that's such funny, like, backstage tea there. And, like, it's cool to think, like, funny to think that you knew at least one of the cast members was Britta. And, obviously, she left yeah. not that lot, like, a couple of episodes or whatever before. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. funny that Heidi lied to you and actually managed to, like, trick you. Kind Straight of. <laughs> to my face with not even a, just a glimpse. She's like, I don't know who she is. And she just, honestly, she really should tap into acting because she had me fooled. I was like, man, Reddit is lying. <laughs> Well, I guess, yeah, like I said, strict contracts. But, you know, at least it meant that you got paired with Heidi and it was obviously a great pairing. Um, Uh And so obviously you sit down and then Heidi sort of, you have to talk about the outfits and she says that there's going to be, it's going to be a disco theme for you two. A couple ideas for us. One that's a little more disco-y feeling. (gasps) Do you love disco? Do I love disco? Is an understatement? Yeah. (laughs) How did you feel about that? Oh, immediately excited. Disco is my favorite. I, I think I'm like one of three who loves disco music. <laughs> but I I immediately got excited and I was like, oh, I want to look like Donna Summer. I was like, if I could look like anybody, it would be Donna Summer. And he was like, oh, I'm definitely going to make that happen. And so when we got the disco thing, I was like, it fits. It fits for us because that's just what it is. And then when... Heidi showed the outfit. I was like, okay. The initial, the original outfit. I was like, I am not going to fit that. (laughs) Just like, I was like, I love you, but I'm not going to fit that. (laughs) So we had to figure out very quickly, what am I going to wear? I'm like, honestly, as long as I didn't care, as long as I didn't come out with two bottle caps and a cork, I didn't give a crap. I was like, I'm on this stage and I'm like, I don't care. You know, if I'm naked, my mom might be mad, but you know. I look cute. <laughs> like you said, it's. I guess it's really difficult because they I have to bring the looks. They know there's going to be a makeover, but obviously everyone's a different body type and different height and whatever. Yeah. It's really difficult to act. I can imagine that must be so difficult, especially for if you don't sew or if you're not like a great yeah. sewer or whatever. I think that must be so difficult. But I think the outfits that you did have fit perfectly, it, both in terms of body, but also just fit as in it was a great fit for yes. the style. And I think you mm-hmm. both sold it and it was such a cool runway. Um, one of the main points that they sort of talked about was you not showing your legs since middle school, I think was what you said. Mm-hmm. So how yeah. d- how did yeah. that feel then thinking, okay, I'm going to show my legs on national TV and did that kind of change your perspective on it? Um, my first immediate thought was terror, um, because I'm very sensitive about my body because I've been made fun of so much about it. So I try to make sure the things that I wear, you know, cover up some of the things that I'm not comfortable with. And, but yeah, immediate terror is what I felt when I realized that I have, I'm going to have on a dress, but then also I used to enjoy wearing dresses. You know, it used to be my favorite thing when I was growing up. And so it wasn't until I got into that high school, middle school setting is where it became a nightmare for me. And so I just, I felt that this, this was my opportunity out of all things to just kind of break out of that. You know, I feel like I've been sitting with pants on this whole time. I'm like, it's necessary for, it's it not just for other girls that look like me and are shaped like me, but for me in general, I need to tell myself it's okay to wear the shorts. It's okay to wear the dress. And I felt like, and if there's any other way to do it, it's on RuPaul's stage. <laughs> that is a great message. And I think that's so true that not only it's great for yourself to give the confidence, but I think you, by doing that, I mean, first of all, your legs looked great. You had nothing to worry about. You rocked it. It was so good. <laughs> but I think it's Thank so you. great that you, like like you said, it repre- you, you were representing a different body type that maybe other people ha- like other people in the competition weren't. So by doing that, yeah. you probably don't, maybe you do know now, but you probably didn't even necessarily think that other people would be watching that. You could be inspiring other people to do what you were doing. And that's amazing. Thank you. I try. It's just, I just, I knew there was, it was not just a point for, because nobody knew not production or anything that, you know, I haven't worn a dress since, you know, 1585. But it's just like, <laughs> so it's just, it was kind of like ironic that that was there. And I was like, okay, I'm here facing many different demons for myself, you know, my own beauty and my self-worth. And so it's kind of like, you know, are you going to show up or are you just going to sit down? 
And I decided to show up and I decided to stand out the best way I could for just honestly, just for myself. And I, I felt like if I can inspire one person, you know, just to live their truth and just live out loud, then, hey, then, you know, my job as a human is complete because, you know, the whole point is to show love and to be inspirational to those in, around you. Because that's what we're here for, you know. So I was happy to just be an example for one or a couple people. <laughs> Well, I think it was more than a couple of people. I think it was you, <laughs> everyone on set, everyone watching at home in America and every other country where it goes to. I think it was definitely your story was just so heartwarming because you could tell you were uncomfortable in a way you were, um, with showing your legs or your body or whatever. But then you mm-hmm. didn't, when you were out on the stage, you did not see that. All you saw was you, big smile, absolutely serving it. Like that was what was so joyous to me about the whole episode was everyone just seems so sort of self-empowered and yeah. happy to be there. And for you, that's amazing. Yes, it was. It was, it was an experience. I wish more, I wish more fans had an opportunity to do that because it literally changes what it is that you see about the show. And then also it's just, you know, everybody needs that little, that little boost. And it, it legit, when I say it changed my life, it seriously 100% did. And I'm I'm very grateful for for the show because without it, I don't think I would have been able to be as strong through some of the other challenges that I've faced after the show. So it helps. Oh, that's that's really that's very sweet. And it's that's mm-hmm. I think people don't think about the how a TV show can really impact someone and the people watching as well. Like that's incredible to think that a show about drag queens can kind of help <laughs> someone that's not even a drag queen or will temp- was a temporary drag queen for a while, or maybe yes, you temporary. are a drag queen in, in sort of, you know, a past life. But it's crazy that mm-hmm. how much that can help you and your confidence in your life. Yes, it, it did. It, it 100% did. And I'm, I'm extremely grateful. I just wish that more people should be able to experience. So, you know, I say it all the time, you know, World of Wonder plus Drag Race, more fans need to have makeovers. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, and so what did it feel like then actually getting into drag for the first time, having the makeup and wearing the heels and the outfit? How did that, or when it all came together, how did it feel? It felt so liberating. Honestly, all the things that I had been packing on to, for me personally, all the things I've been packing on to myself, you know, I literally washed it all away when that makeup was done. So my reaction is 100% genuine. And it's the first time I've ever had my makeup done. So, you know, yeah. (laughs) So I've never, you know, I wasn't, I never felt that I would look that cute in makeup, like fully made up, I thought I would look ridiculous. And even when I tried myself, I was like, oh, no, 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 take this off. And so, <laughs> um, but just being in drag, it's just, when I look at the pictures, that's exactly, I was like, that was me. Heidi did an amazing job. I had no idea there were some struggles, but <laughs> Heidi did an amazing job. Heidi made me feel so beautiful and so confident. And I, I became Honey Almighty immediately when that wig was on and that red, red lipstick came on. <laughs> I was good. I was I was feeling my oats, so they said. Yeah, you could tell. And like I think RuPaul always says on the show, he says drag doesn't sort of hide or whatever. It reveals who you actually are and it sort of brings out yeah. a different persona. And that's great that you as Honey then had that kind of confidence. And like you said, the red lipstick and everything just kind of brought that out in you and you can then realize that you can have that power when you're not in drag as well which is what RuPaul always says and I guess it's it's true right even if you were just on the show for one episode that can have such an effect yes it did it had an amazing effect and it honestly just it made me see myself differently it made me feel that you know I can do this on my own you know I might look ridiculous but as long as I feel good nothing else matters no, it doesn't. And you definitely sold it. You two were so fun. And so obviously in the episode, unfortunately, you two were in the bottom. Did yeah. you, what did you think going into it? Did you kind of know after you did the runway before the critiques and then did the critiques change your mind in terms of you thinking where you were in the ranking? Well, when I saw the dress and, you know, after the shock and awe came from that, um, and then I saw Heidi's beautiful outfit. 
as a as a fan of the show, I was like, we don't match. Immediately, I was like, we don't match. But I just like, you know, I know that we were kind of limited on what we could do and with the time frame that we had. And so I tried to do myself, we tried to embrace the best way that we could. And I think both of us underhandedly knew that by our outfits being so different in a way, um, that the judges would be like, you guys don't match. <laughs> you guys, there's no family resemblance. But Heidi and I, we were like, we're just going to have to sell the crap out of it. You know, they asked for eggs, you know, we're going to give them bacon. So it's just like, we need to sell it and, you know, make sure and like, yeah, it's bacon. But, you know, it tastes like eggs. You know, we did our best. <laughs> and then what a lot of people couldn't see, my outfit actually had a lot of sparkle on it. But um, but the beads were really kind of tiny. And so that's how we were like, well, we match that way. We got some sparkles, you know. But yeah, yeah I just we kind of knew that that might be an issue. But, you know, we were we decided to embrace it and just do our best. And then, you know, we can sell it the best way we can. You know, it didn't it unfortunately it didn't pan out. But, you know, we still look cute. <laughs> you did look cute it was like I said I mean the, yeah the, the resemblance wasn't maybe quite there but I think you both look disco you both look sparkly yeah. and that's fine like at the end of the day who cares I thought it was still cool you could tell that you were yeah. both from the same disco family um, yes so that's some yes. kind of resemblance uh, and <laughs> so then how did it feel then knowing that you were in the bottom two um it's I was I was disappointed but I was, you know, because I was like, oh, we didn't sell it. You know, they didn't want the bacon. But then <laughs> but then I realized I'm like, you know, we, we didn't do what was asked. And it, we were both disappointed, you know. But then Heidi was like, you know what? It's not my first time. I was like, wait, what? I was like, she's like, I shouldn't have told you that. Gosh darn it. But she's like, <laughs> she's like, but you know what? I'm going to make sure. She's like, I'm not leaving tonight. Because if I leave knowing the fact that I made you beautiful, then I didn't do my job. She's like, so I'm going, she's like, so regardless of who I come up with, they're going to be mad because they're going home. I was like, yes, yes. And so Heidi was super confident going into it, but we were both disappointed. But we understand nothing could compare to Bethany's look. She, we were like, you should sue how much you got beat. Like that, the face was incredible. You know, we all were looking like we lost. <laughs> <laughs> we're in the work, we're like, we lost. I just, no, no. We, are you sure? I'm like, I'm not saying I don't look cute, but over there, look over there. You know, it's just like, that's what it was. So, but yeah, we were disappointed ultimately, but we did our best. Yeah, like I said, I guess it was very tough competition because, yeah, Bethany and Jada did do an amazing job. But I think you definitely had an amazing connection. You could tell that you and Heidi were just loving it and you were just so, mm -hmm. you know, like pummeling the runway and you were just absolutely having a blast. So I think that is kind of more important in a lot of ways that what you got from the experience as opposed to whether you actually were in the top or the bottom, you know. Um, mm -hmm. and it was lovely that no one went home as well. Like that was kind of the, yeah. it was, that's what made the episode so wholesome as well. And so sort of loving that no one went home and you were all ended up being happy. Yes. Yes. I was trying to tell, cause I was trying to talk to Tiffany off a ledge. I was like, Jackie's going to be fine. I promise you. I was like, I feel it in my spirit. It's going to be a double save. She's like, I don't know. It's all my fault. I was like, it's not your fault, Jackie. You guys look amazing. And so, and but I was like, oh gosh, man, I hope Heidi needs to go home. I look cute, but I don't want her to go home because of it. And so, but when we found out it was a double save, that excitement when we were in the untuck was genuine. We were super excited. We had no idea there was going to be a double save. And we were just so excited. I was like, yes, Heidi does not deserve to go home because we look cute. We don't match, but we look cute. <laughs> That's like, yeah, definitely. I think it was such a lovely episode. It was one of my favourite episodes because it was just so happy and joyous and the fact that no one went home, actually, sometimes that's not always, obviously, if no one goes home, it, it kind of takes away the competition a little bit in that sense. But on an episode like that, because it was celebrating yeah. sort of love and everything, I actually really liked the double save because it was deserved as well. They both killed it. Yes. 
yes, we did. And I was, I was so happy for Heidi. And I was like, yes, I was like, I told you. And then Heidi's like, oh, I had that song in the bag. I performed that song all the time. So I knew I wasn't going to go home. I was like, see, that's, that's the spirit. That is the spirit. That's definitely the attitude you have to have. And so um, speaking of lip syncs and sort of, you know, things like that, obviously you all had to do a lip sync as well on stage. And what was that mm-hmm. like for you? If if they, like how you guys saw my face when they cut, they're like, I was like, yeah. I, I mean, like, like, of course I've lip synced before, like, you know, in my room growing up and things like that. But being on camera, I was like, okay. Okay, and like shortly after that, like when, you know, they did like a camera change and then all of that wave of, okay, we're getting made up in drag, we're going to be fully made up, and now we're going to have to dance. People are going to see me move. And so immediate terror. I had a panic attack on set. They had to call the medic. (laughs) I was so terrified. I was like, I was like, I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make it. And I had to like, kind of just, I had to take a moment and just be like, okay, you're either going to do this or you're going to pass out. So what do you want to (laughs) do? So it's just the terror set in and, you know, we had the song. When I drove home that night, I was just like, I literally just, I played it over and over and over again, just to kind of get in my head. I already knew the song, but, you know, I was just like, okay, Nicole, you can do this. You know you can do this. You've done it many times. The mirror has seen you've done this many times. So you can do this. And so when we got on that stage, I, I've i never felt such an adrenaline rush in all of my life. And I just did my best to just, you know, because I was singing against Tiffany. I was like, Tiffany's going to do splits. Now, dang it, if I do the splits, it's going to be an ER moment. So I'm like, I can't. So I'm going to do what I can and, you know, I'm not going to keep my leg up because my dress is a little short, but I'm going to, I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to, I'm going to sell the fantasy of disco. And that's what I tried to do. And my husband's like, you are so cute. Oh, I'm sorry. I did not mean to curse. I, so I apologize. And so he was like, you're so cute. And I was like, that's all I wanted. That's all I wanted. But yeah, terror, immediate terror set in. I can imagine it must be scary and exhilarating at the same time. Mm-hmm. But I think, yeah, you definitely sold it. And like you said, you if you if you can't do the split, I can't do the splits. Like you said, if I tried to do the splits, I'd probably break a hip. So I think yeah. you definitely sold it, like with the with the expression and the face and everything. And I think everyone did such a great job and the way they kind of stitched it all together and everything. You could tell it was kind of more they were doing it almost like for you all to have fun yeah. and everything. It wasn't actually sort of whether you were all going to do crazy splits and jumps and kicks. It was more just a chance for you to all experience that amazing opportunity of doing a lip sync on the main stage. Yes. And we thought that, you know, Rupa was going to pick who was going to be in the bottom <laughs> from that. And so I was like, I am not being in the bottom. I'm, I understand my queen might, but this makeover will not be in the bottom. And so, but no. In the end, they, it was the basic room basically applauded us all because telling us how beautiful and how wonderful it was to see us up there on that stage. So honestly, if I would have died that next day, I would have been completely content. RuPaul told me I look beautiful and I was like, I'm good. I'm good with life. <laughs> That's all you need in life. Only you did look beautiful and it was, it was amazing. I mean, we all loved the episode and you could just tell you were all having a blast. So that's all it, that's really what, if you all are having fun, we're going to have fun watching. And I think that was really what, you know, was the main point of the episode. So one thing I saw on Instagram was that you went to DragCon this year and you got to meet Heidi and I assume obviously others. So what was that like? I was super excited. You know, it's not my first time going to DragCon. This would be my fourth. And so um, I was just excited that, you know, I would be, I would be able to experience it because, you know, with the pandemic, you know, DragCon was canceled for two years. And so, you know, season 12, you know, kind of got, you know, unfortunately the short end of the stick. And so I was super excited to see Heidi's booth. That was the first place I went when I went into DragCon. And I was so excited because I hadn't seen Heidi in that whole time. And so I know Heidi moved to L.A. and we were in contact with one another, but I couldn't, 
go to any like shows because you know I had to think about my family and things like that. So that was like since the show, that was the first time we had seen each other, and it was amazing. And you know, we embraced and hugged and kind of like Heidi and I kind of get lost in our own little world for a second, and we forget that there are other people waiting in line. <laughs> Because we were talking for like a good like 15, 20 minutes. I was like, um, Heidi, the people in your line look a little upset, so maybe we should just um yeah, talk a little later. <laughs> so but yeah, it was it honestly felt like we there was no time that separated us. We were just completely giggling and just laughing and just having a great time. I have tons of photos that I didn't add, but to Instagram, but yeah, it was an amazing, amazing time. Everybody should experience track on. It's the best. I can imagine. I've never been yet, but I, would, I hope to go this year. But um, or, well, the next time that it happens. But uh, it mm -hmm. looks so fun, and I can imagine, especially for you, because obviously you were like involved in the show, and you got yeah. to meet the person that you were on the show with. It, it's even more special and kind of more of a connection. And it's it seems like such a lovely place to be in general as well. Just like if you love drag, you love the positivity of everyone in the community mm -hmm. and everything. I can imagine that's an amazing experience. Yeah, and just as equal, because I, for a brief moment, I forgot that I was on the show. And so people were like, hey, honey, almighty. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it's just like when we were walking around, people were like, can I have a picture with you? I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, it was just like, it was, it was cool. And so I was just like, my husband was like, oh, my God, I'm with a celebrity. I was like, stop it. Stop. The queens or the celebrities. We're just willing participants. And, you know, I just got a little brief shine. He's like, Nicole, we've been stopped like 18 times. I was like, well, you know, I can't help that they like the disco. So. <laughs> Well, yeah, definitely. I mean, you were on the show. Your episode was amazing. Yeah. So you are legitimately just part of the Drag Race star you know, fandom and everything. And people will know yes. who you are. So that's it's cool. You kind of feel like a celebrity for the day, I guess. Yeah, it was it was really cool because I'm like, I'm I'm just living my element just walking around DragCon. And then people go, like, honey almighty. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so so yeah, it was really cool. It was really cool, especially when we were around our Queen's booths. And so, you know, people got a real good kick out of that. That's so sweet. And I, you, know, you and Heidi, obviously, you have this lovely connection. Um, have you two yeah. stayed in touch since the show? Yes, we have. Um, so when, after the, we were done um, with our portion of the show, um, we weren't allowed to reach out to the Queen's and things like that because um, they didn't want anything to be late so which is understandable <clears throat> and so once the cast was announced um i sent an immediate friend request over to heidi in closet i was like um do you remember me she's like shut up of course i remember you <laughs> and so we had been honestly been chatting and you know keeping in touch uh since january of 2021 so yeah we've we've been in close connection i've you know, she sent me stuff for my birthday. I sent her stuff for her birthday. And, you know, it's been, you know, so we'll check on each other from time to time. And I'm like, you know, I was like, hey, you're going to Europe. Make sure you have this. Make sure you have that, this and that. And so, yeah, we, we've stayed pretty close since the show. So it's been really cool. Oh, that's lovely. And it's lovely to hear that you've ha you had a connection on screen, but also that's translated off screen as well. And obviously you two yes. were clearly a perfect match as well. <laughs> yes. Yes, besties for life. <laughs> that's very sweet. And I'm so I'm so pleased. And that seems so... You both seem like really bubbly and kind of a kind of quirky side, a bit quiet sometimes, but then clearly not in reality. So I think you were a great match in that way as well. So you're obviously like kindred spirits. Yes, we were. We were. It was... It's weird because, you know, um, when we were on the set, they were like, you guys were like meant to be together. I was like, you know... You know, it's just, you know, cousins. We cousins somewhere, some way. We don't have to figure this out. You're 23 and me or something because we, we related somehow. <laughs> so, because we were just instant connection, instant. That's, you know, I'm, that's so sweet. And you could tell that was genuine as well, which is why the episode was so great. Um, mm. And so obviously the name of my channel is Drag Tea Served. So I was wondering mm -hmm. if you could serve us some drag tea and possibly tell us something that we don't know that happened off screen or something that 
it happened that you wish they had shown or they couldn't show, perhaps? Hmm, a little bit of tea. Well, there was a portion after when we were all done kind of filming. Um, they asked myself and Tiffany to have... So after the queens had gone off stage and there was a double save... Um, they asked us to, you know, record a, like a brief moment to where we're, you know, sitting there and just having like a moment with our Queens. And I'm so mad they didn't show that. Cause it was, you know, I was crying. Heidi was crying. Jackie was crying. <laughs> he was crying. You know, it's just like, it was a really brief moment to where I could tell Heidi how grateful I was for this experience and how much she and the show pretty much saved my honestly saved my life because if it wasn't for the show it's just I don't I don't know you know where I would have been but honestly it would have been a definite struggle the show literally helped me break away a lot of the demons that I had and I wish they could have would have kept that moment and then also in that moment um I we by the untucked they don't really have this anymore in the upcoming seasons but you know they had a whole bunch of like little knickknacks and things backstage and I kept looking at it. I'm like, what is all this stuff? There's like a record player and a trophy sitting in the corner. And so when we're walking off the set and they're filming us, I was like, Heidi, what is? what are these things? She's like, oh, it's just the show's knickknacks and stuff. And so I grabbed and grabbed a trophy. I was like, you don't need it. And I just <laughs> ran off the stage. <laughs> and so you hear Heidi back, oh, Lord, my child likes to steal. And so... <laughs> I just wish they would have kept that moment. <laughs> it was super funny. I had everybody laughing. Even Jackie was like, what just happened? Well, Tiffany, take some stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, I just, I wish they would have kept that. Maybe like in a, you know, clip show, they might show that little moment. But yeah, that was, that, that part was really cool. And so I'm kind of, I was kind of bummed they didn't have it in the initial edit. But, you know, I have it in my memory, so it's always great. That's so funny that you were like basically stealing stuff from set. Uh, did you keep the trophy or did you put it back? No, I put it back. I was terrified. I was absolutely terrified. I was like, I don't want this to be like, I don't want to get cut out of the show because, you know, you know, a fellow contestant or like participant, you know, we had to let her go for stealing. And so I was like, I didn't want that to be my mantra. And so I was like, no, I put it back. But then like a lot of the other like teas are like, hey, I didn't know where you put it. So you want to take it? I was like, no, no, I don't want to take it. But I did walk away with a boa. So yeah, I was, cause I was the last one to leave the set that night. And so I, I saw that they were like getting rid of some boas that they had from another skit that they did. I was like, oh, can I have one? And so they let me have a boa. So, so I, I was the only one to walk away with something from the set. That's <laughs> so that's cool. my team. I mean, you know? a boa, who, I mean, that's so many uses you can have for a boa so yes very colorful boa it's in my living room right now and you know i make sure that it's literally just on display so anytime you walk into my house they're like you have a boa. oh so let me tell you the story about this boa and so <laughs> yeah so yeah that's so that's my tea you know i got a souvenir from set you know i tried to steal a souvenir but you know i had you know i thought about it and i put it back but i still got a souvenir that's so sweet. That's such a funny story. And like you said, that would have been really funny to show. I guess they can't show everything, but that sounds funny. No. And it's it's great that you've got, not only you've got a free boa, but like a story for the boa as yeah. well. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, and so one question that I I guess I've always wondered was people quite often wonder whether Drag Race is scripted or not. Obviously, it's mm -hmm. a reality show. So when you were on set, either on the in the workroom or untucked, were you ever sort of like fed lines or sort of told what to talk about or something like that? Or was it all just, they just filmed you and just so, see what happens? No, no, they, it's very organic. And that's the one thing that I really loved. And I was, as a fan, I was kind of wondering myself too. I was like, hmm. But no, it's, it's, it's very organic. It's like, honestly, it, it kind of feels like, you know, like a real world situation. You know, we, we were there and, you know, they would tell us, you know, where to stand. Heidi and I got in trouble because we were constantly singing songs. And so, <laughs> and they're like, guys, copyright. You can't stop singing. <laughs> and 
so, but no, it was very, it was very organic. And we had the opportunity to really bond with our queens and also just the crew members and things like that. So it wasn't that, you know, hey, say this, or how do you feel about this? No, it was not, it was nothing like that. It was, it was very organic and very just, it was very natural. And you just kind of, and it allowed us to be our genuine selves. You know, we didn't feel like we had to play up into anything. So what you guys saw is who we are. That's really fun. That's really sweet. And it's also really interesting because I guess I've heard from other people that obviously there is some kind of, they'll ask you about a specific topic and ask you to sort of speak about it, but not necessarily like scripted. But it's interesting to hear that oh. from from your side, obviously you were a fan before, so mm-hmm. you kind of wondered, but it's nice to hear that it is just organic. And I guess that's why the show has been successful because it's just genuinely yeah. interesting to watch. Yeah, I was, I was concerned, but you know, they... Honestly, we when we were on set, they just they really just said, hey, guys, you know, there's going to be a camera pointed at you from time to time, <laughs> you know, try to just talk into your mic and talk clear, and you know, and I just wanted to hear for me personally, Queen's walking and I was just like, oh, my God, I'm considered a queen. And so <laughs> Queen's walking. Queen's are walking. Walking check. Good check. Rolling, rolling. Marker. And so, and it was just, everything was just supernatural and like production and everything. It was just, it was a really cool experience as a fan, just to see how everything is put together and, and just how just natural it felt. And we didn't, I didn't feel forced. I, so I can only talk about my experience because there were times that we were all separated. So I don't know if anybody else was, but for me personally, from what I saw when gathered with my queen outside of my queen, it was just. It was it was organic for me and Heidi and I were constantly talking. So, you know, there was never a moment. I'm like, if they could see the edits of we probably there's hours of us talking, which probably maybe didn't help us that much because we were talking too much, other than trying to make sure our outfits match. But <laughs> I'm just it was it was so fun. But yeah, it was it was fun for me and you know, I didn't get any of that, hey, say this or say that. No. It wasn't it wasn't like that for me. Well, that's good. I'm glad you had a, like an experience that sort of affirmed how much you loved the show and that it was organic. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. So obviously, speaking of questions and uh, scripted and everything, I would love to get onto some subscriber questions that for you that my subscribers sent in. Um, okay. So the first question was, how has your appearance on Drag Race affected your everyday life? Um, my appearance on Drag Race, um, it's helped me so much because when I left I felt a new sense of myself and I had no idea that that experience and that confidence and that strength that I didn't know that I had would have helped me when I found out you know a year later that you know I was diagnosed with cancer if I didn't have that I wouldn't have been able to be as strong in my and honestly in my opinion you know realizing at 36, you know, you have cancer and it's life threatening. You know, I just, I really tapped into my honey almighty strength and that confidence and that strength that I felt to fight this secondary battle, you know, because I'm like, I battled the body. Now I got to battle it again. (laughs) And so it was just that impacted me and made me so much stronger to go through this fight because I wanted to you know, I wanted to keep living. I had a new thirst for life because of the show and because of my experience. So that's it. That's how it changed me. And I, I'm grateful. I'm grateful to everyone involved because without it, I don't think I would be here right now. Wow, that is that's so amazing that that it gave you that much. You know, obviously, we all know that the show means a lot to obviously just not, not only the people on it, but the viewers. But Obviously, for you, obviously, I'm so sorry to hear about mm-hmm. the cancer. And I'm, I'm glad that you had something that really managed to lift you up and gave you a new lease for life because you are just so full of life. We saw that on the show. You were so warm and so lovely. And I'm sure everyone at home, uh, people obviously, when they submitted their questions, they were all like, she just seems so nice. Like, everyone <laughs> everyone was like, she just seems so cool. <laughs> yeah, you know, I try. I try my best. <laughs> um... And so one of the other questions was, um, 
you kind of mentioned earlier that you were kind of kept separate from people a lot. But one of the questions was, how much interaction did you have with the other girls? Did you only communicate with Heidi or did you also get to talk to the other queens? Um, We actually, in the beginning, it was a lot with our queen. And then later on, we all kind of mingled with one another. Like, I got a chance to really, like, kick it up with, with Gigi and Jackie and Jada and Crystal. And so it's just like, it was in the beginning, we were kind of like, like with our queens and just kind of try to get our outfits together and, and try to see how we were going to look cute the best way we could. And then later on, we all got a chance to mingle on this, especially on the second day. We got a chance to really like mingle and, you know, kick back and laugh and giggle. And so, yeah, it was, it was, it was like that in the beginning, but then later on, yeah, we got a chance to really mingle with everybody. And it was, it was great. I would I would live it a thousand times over if I could. Oh, that's man, that's lovely. I'm so glad you got to talk to all of them. And one of the questions that's actually kind of related to this as well. Someone else asked, um, "What were the queens like, and were they the as portrayed on TV?" The queens are amazing. Jada is super funny, like. Super, super funny. Like, Jada was, like, cracking jokes left and right. But the person that surprised me the most was Crystal. Crystal is not one to, like, you just can't say anything to Crystal and then just be like, mm. no, she was bringing them zingers left and right, having us all in stitches. Crystal, honestly, like, she can kill them with words if she could. And so it's just, like, that was, like, surprising because you don't kind of like see that a lot like Jada is funny but like Jada's like super funny like really funny and Crystal and Gigi and Jackie and oh my gosh everybody was just like super chill you know I thought there would be like you know I thought it was going to be like a different experience but no it was like a fun experience I felt like I was just hanging out with my girlfriends it was it was amazing and <laughs> I get I it's so hard to describe because it's just I wish that everyone could experience it, but it's just it was just mingling with everybody and just seeing how like super like chill and nice everybody was. I was like, wow. Wow. That's I mean, I think you can tell that you all had a blast and that's why the episode was so good. And it's interesting mm-hmm. to hear, like you said, that maybe like Jada and Crystal, we, I think we could see that they were funny in a way, but I don't think we kind of, from what you're saying, it sounds like they were quite a lot more kind of comedy and funny off camera than yeah. we saw. So that's really interesting mm-hmm. to hear. Yeah, it was, it was really great. Uh, and so one of the other questions was, um, did you get to talk to RuPaul when the cameras weren't rolling? And then they also added, you looked amazing in the makeover and looked like you had so much fun. Yes, we did get to talk to RuPaul for like a brief moment. And um, when we had our segment with RuPaul, um, Heidi and myself, and, you know, they're changing cameras to go to um, the next set of participants in their queen. So Ru was like, this is the outfit. And so Heidi was like, yes. It was like, okay, I love it. So like, are you, he's like, are you going to look cute? And I was like, of course I'm going to look cute in it. You picked me. Of course I'm going to look cute. And so, and we were, we had like some brief moments with Rue, like about the outfit, Heidi and myself, and then also about my name. <laughs> and so, yeah, we got a chance to talk to Rue off camera and, you know, for just like a brief second then, because Rue is in and out. So, but yeah, we did. That's nice that you got to actually speak to him and kind of get, a little bit of perspective that maybe we don't see because obviously we only see what's on camera because we're watching it on TV. But it's cool to think mm-hmm. that you actually met him in real life on the show and you got to sort of see behind the curtains, so to speak. That's, I mean, I'm sure that everyone watching, like myself, is so jealous and like envious. <laughs> uh-huh. I just, you know, and that's the one thing I'm just kind of like, I just wish that they would do it more often because fans really need to see how the show is ran and understand that you know it was like Rue's song people want to blame it on the edit <laughs> and it honestly it, it honestly isn't for 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 us I don't know maybe we're you know seeing it from rose colored glasses but it wasn't that way for us and so you know it's I I wish that they will allow more fans to experience it especially since there's so many mantras of RuPaul's Drag Race all over the world 
you know, more fans should have this experience. Definitely. I think you can tell. I mean, like it gave you so much confidence and you said it obviously helped you through all of your troubles and everything. So I can only imagine how that would help so many other people. And it would be amazing if they could open that up kind of thing and have more people. Mm hmm. Um, and then one of the other questions, there were lots and lots of questions about your legs. <laughs> uh, wow. Okay. And, awesome. Um, Thanks, guys. <laughs> and so we all said, people were, everyone was saying like, your legs looked amazing. You're so fabulous and everything. Uh, and people wanted to know whether you've continued or you've showed your, started to show your legs more because of the show. I actually have. I actually have. And I've, I felt very comfortable once I left the show and it, I don't think twice about it. You know, if it's like, if I'm hot, I have shorts, I have capris, I have, so I don't, I don't really think too much about it anymore. I don't stress on it. And I don't look around to see who's looking at me. I just walk in there and I look cute and I feel comfortable. So yeah, I have been, you know, and it's just like, you know, I owe the show to that because it, I've never felt so beautiful in all my life. And, you know, it made me realize that I was beautiful the whole entire time. I just, I had to see it. And so when I finally saw it, it was, it was amazing. And I, and I, I'm kind of mad at myself. I'm like, man, all these years, hey, you know, you could have been looking fierce this whole time and you've been sitting in here, child, now it's just time to live it up. Now you got a second lease on life, so might as well just live it up. So who cares what anyone else has to think? As RuPaul says, if they ain't paying your bills, don't pay them any mind. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you so much for being on my show, Nicole, or should I say honey? Uh, thank you so much. Um, where can people find you if they sort of want to get in touch with you or maybe if they won't have any more questions or just want to follow your life? <laughs> where can they get in touch with you? Well, you can find me on Instagram. I My my handle is Nikki underscore Kirby Aquarius, you know, because I am Kirbyus and, you know, that is my love yet. So, yes, you can find me online on Instagram posting about, you know, my, my every day and, you know, constantly making my husband feel wonderful. Cause you know, I constantly kind of <laughs> make fun of him from time to time, <laughs> but yeah, you can find me on Instagram. And so if you're looking for me, you can always find me on Heidi's page as well. Great. I'll make sure I put the handles. Thank you so much. It's been so lovely to talk to you. I'm sure everyone like was so happy to see you and hear an update about you since being on the show because we all loved you on the show. You were just so warm and such a bright spirit. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It was a wonderful experience. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.